Typically that means issues around freedom of the media, so the work that you all do, freedom of journalists to do your work. Um, it also means the access that you have and that individual citizens have to information that's held by the government. Uh, so we're pursuing those kinds of issues, freedom of the media, access to information, um, and a range of issues around that. We're also interested in freedom uh, on the internet, freedom online, and so forth. And over the course of uh, the week, we're meeting with both government officials uh, and with civil society so that we understand these issues to the fullest extent possible. And so what was your last visit to Japan and compared to your last time, mm. are there any changes? Are there any differences that you found? Well, this is, only, this is my first official visit to Japan. So I've been to Japan before. Uh, I love the country. Why did you do that? Pardon me? Why did you do Oh, I did come through. Well, actually, it was a stopover. I spent the afternoon here with uh, members of the Bar Association and activists. Oh, you're referring to... Okay, so let me back up a little bit. Okay, so one thing that, uh, that I do and that other rapporteurs do in the UN system is visit countries. And we visit uh, you know, any number of countries around the world. So we were interested in visiting Japan. And uh, the government of Japan <coughs> excuse me, has a standing invitation to rapporteurs like me, UN experts reporting on human rights issues. And, and Japan invited me to come uh, last December. Um, and then in November, that, that visit was canceled. I don't know why it was canceled. I think you would need to ask the government why it was canceled. And I'm happy that it was rescheduled uh, for, for the spring. Right. Well, it's too early for me to say, you know, what I think about freedom of the media right now. And um, I'm aware of those uh, those ranking systems. You know, Japan uh, in some areas ranks very high in freedom of expression. Um, and these are civil society rankings, unofficial rankings, right? So, um, freedom online, freedom on the internet, Japan ranks among the top countries in the world. Um, and I think that there, on the press issues, I think there's a free press, but as you say, there have been some indications of pressures on journalists, and that's one of the reasons why we came, is that we want to investigate, investigate those. Right now, I'm completely, um, I have a completely open mind as to the state of the media uh, in Japan, and that's what we're trying to focus on over the course of, of the week. So we'll meet with the government, we'll meet with journalists and civil society activists and others, and next week we'll be able to draw some conclusions. But I don't have any conclusions right now at this moment. Um, in February, I think you've heard about this, um, uh, Takai, Ms. Takai Jin, she's a internal affairs minister, and yes. she made some comments on Japanese media. Right. That's about, uh, she said, um, Well, so the first thing is I would be delighted to meet with her and to understand more what she had in mind. Um, but I think, I mean, two things I would say. One is, um, generally speaking, it's important for the media to self-regulate and for government not to interfere uh, in, the, in, um, in what journalists do. Um, particularly when we talk about sort of uh, the vague notion of fairness. Um, because fairness might mean one thing to the government and something else to journalists and to the public. So that's one thing that is very important for, for journalists to be free from government interference. The second thing is that government officials should be careful not to intimidate um, 
uh, journalists, and that means not to instill a kind of uh, fear that uh, that government might take action when when the when journalists are reporting on issues of politics and security and, and other matters. So that you know, for me, it's important to talk to government ministers and learn what exactly they have in mind, um, and and my hope is that uh, that that the government won't go down the path of, uh, of interfering with what journalists do. So are you going to meet her directly? I mean, not the officials from the ministry? We do have a meeting at, uh, at the ministry. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that I'll have a chance to meet her as well. So you don't know yet? I don't, I, I don't know if, if we are meeting her specifically. I hope so. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go in a moment, but um, there is a whistleblower protection act in Japan. And, um, and I think I mean, one of the issues that we'll look at is how does that actually operate. Um, also, how it, how it functions in relation to the new uh, Secrets Act as well. Um, so there is a law, and I think that it's common around the world for, um, for people in organizations and in governments to, to be very protective. Uh, of their organization. It's not specifically a Japanese issue and one of the things I like to hear from civil society and from government is the extent to which they're actually protecting whistleblowers and allowing whistleblowers um, to really feel that they can call out abuse and bring that to the attention both within their organizations and if necessary uh, bring that information to members of the press like yourselves. So, Maybe one more question, but yeah, then I definitely very short have one. to go. Um, I, have, um, I do know the teacher club system in Japan. They prevent, I mean, uh, newspaper, big newspapers and the TV sure. stations prevent for the freelancers and foreign journalists to enter the ministries or, or even the press conferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you think? No, I'm familiar with that system. I mean, that's a system also that um, that is a responsibility of the media yeah. to deal with too. So we're talking about a lot of different issues. You know, part part of the issue might be around what's the government's responsibility. Another is is also around media and you know whether there's solidarity within the media that allows freelancers, independent media, as well as the traditional established press to, to have access to government officials. I think there's a responsibility um, of many different parties. Um, for all, of these, for all of these different things. Yes, of course. Of uh, course. Last, last very, question. Yeah, very quick one. I'd like to ask you about hate speech. So is this the topic that you're going to cover as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah we definitely will cover it. And, and clearly there are issues around racism. I mean, this is per pervasive around the world. Racism and, and various forms of speech against minority groups. Um, in, in Japan, I've heard of stories related to um, intimidation of, uh, of the Korean minority, for example. So we'll be addressing that as well. My, my concern is that um, any laws that deal with expression are very narrowly drawn, and in that context, deal with incitement to violence or hatred, um, and not allow for punishing minority groups, um, which would be the unintended consequence of those kinds of laws. That I need to go, yeah. but where we have an another meeting to get to. Excuse so, me, thank you. Uh, it's important things. Yeah. Um, please explain again. The Japanese government asked you to uh, to delay uh, to visiting Japan. Yes, but I don't know the reason for that initial delay. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is that is that the government did in the end invite me and we're able to do this visit, uh, which I'm very very pleased about. Anyway, initial uh, initial uh, appointment is uh, was uh, last uh, last year, the end of last year. Yes. Initial. Yeah. Initially. Yes. Initially. And, and initially. It was, last year. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You Thank will, you. They will give you uh, uh, information. I think so. Yeah. I expect good 
discussions with members of the government. I think for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.